Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and we're going to be going into part six of our Dragon series here. We're going to finish up our texture mapping and see what he looks like then. Um, uh, a user comment uh, by, I believe her name was Renee, mentioned that the ambient occlusion uh, should be set to add rather than multiply like I had it before and if you set it to multiply or if, you, if it was set on multiply we also had to have environment lighting to be able to see but if you just turn it to add you don't need any of the others so I went ahead and did that and uh, went ahead and baked out the uh, ambient occlusion map again and it, you can see it looks roughly the same but um, it, it probably rendered a little bit faster maybe but anyways we'll go with that one instead so um, go ahead and go into camera view I guess um, we rendered out the tangent normal map. Let's go ahead and go into our material setting here and to the textures. Okay, so this is not the tangent normal map, it's the ambient occlusion. So let me make sure that's loading the right one. Dragon tangent normals. There we go. Accept. Okay, there it is. So that's giving our, our dragon our bump texture. Now we want to start working on the color of his skin. So let's go down to this next spot in our little tier here and add new. We're going to add a image or movie and we're going to add that. Let's open it first, I guess. Scroll down. And it's right there, the ambient occlusion map that we made. And let's make sure it's going to be mapped to our UV settings. Okay. And color is fine. And so now let's make sure our ambient occlusion is turned off and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the layer that has our lights on it and one other thing I want to do real quick that'll save some time because even though it's not visible Blender is still calculating that it's there and it's making uh, your computer run a tiny bit slower so if we go into uh, that layer that our high-res dragon is on we can go ahead and just delete him and if you've saved him in previous versions um, he, you'll still have access to him later if you want to do something else with him. Uh, so to keep from saving over the copy that I have, I'm just going to go ahead and save as and name it this name this one 06. And I've been playing with it already, so I'll just go ahead and overwrite what I was playing with earlier. So now I will go to that layer and turn on that layer. And when we render out now, we should see. This was also playing with this earlier and. Uh, was not the correct one so this one should look correct so we got the, the same uh, ambient occlusion mapped on top of our bump map with them so you can kind of see where the dark dark there's darker areas inside like the crevices and and uh, things like that so anyways that's exactly what, the way we want it to look but we don't want a gray dragon do we we want a, a nice red dragon so let's go back into our textures area and go to a new tier now we're gonna select new and we could make the model itself red but I myself I prefer to leave the model kind of a grayish color so when you do ambient occlusion renders it kind of looks more professional in my opinion you can do how you like but this is the way I found to actually give it a solid color without having to give it a uh, texture So we just go to blend and go down here go to colors turn on ramp I'm just go ahead and this first one here is selected already the black color set to uh, alpha zero so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and it filled it up with the one on this side which was white set to alpha 100% so I'm just gonna select this white and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna make it a nice kind of a, a blood red like so okay so I guess we could go ahead and name this red and then why not name this one uh, AO, ambient occlusion, and then this one can be normals. Okay. Now, little trick I want to use. I still want my dragon to have these nice shadows and the crevices and everything, but as it is now, he's just going to be solid red with, with none of that. So I just go over here and I hit the little up arrow, and it's going to move the red up above the ambient occlusion map. And you can see down here on our little preview that now the ambient occlusion is, it's kind of, it, as far as the color goes, it reads the bottom one uh, as being on the top layer of the dragon. So 
Uh, you kind of think of it as the opposite of what you see. Red is actually below the AO. But I would like to see some of the red through the AO, so I'm going to go to my AO and scroll down here. Let's collapse this guy. And we can collapse this guy. And right here where it says blend, let's change that to multiply. And you go up and you can see the red and you can still see some of those shadows in the crevices and things. So let's go back to our materials and let's get rid of that awful red, that awful glare that we've got on them. Let's lower that way down. Actually, that's our diffuse. Specular is what we want to do. Lower that way down. Let's say 0.15 should be fine. And then the hardness, let's, we don't need to lower that too far. Let's make it, uh, uh, let's try 30. That might make it too dull. Let's make it 35, we'll say. Okay, let's go ahead and save. And we'll render out now. So now we should have a nice red dragon with the little shadows in the crevices. Well, there we go, that's looking pretty nice. However, I'd like to give him some black uh, claws and uh, mess with the inside of his mouth a little bit. It'll stay about the same color, but his teeth will need to change colors. So, uh, that's going to be a little difficult as we can't really see them. So, one thing I would like to do is show you how to create a shape key real quick so we can get in there and, uh, and see those teeth when we render out. So let's just go ahead and escape. And go ahead and save. All right. So I'm going to go into the side view and go into orthographic view by hitting 5 on my numpad. Just scroll in here. And let's go to our object data tab. We're going to create a new shape key. Just hit that one and it just gives you the basis, the shape that uh, is the base shape for things to occur. When it's what's in neutral position, this is what it's going to look like. This is the base shape. So we want to make his mouth open, we need to add a new shape. So we'll call this one jaw open. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go in here, go tap into edit mode, go into my vertex select, and actually I want to go to my face select, and I want to select zoom out, let's just select all of his body and tail and everything. I guess it doesn't really matter as long as we're not working on that. But anyways, I want to select all these guys, control L, and I want to hide them. So now we just got the jaw and the inside of the mouth. Which, if I wanted to select just the lower lip, usually I would just select the face there and hit control L, but as you can see, it's kind of a loop there. So the way to get around that is, let's grab our vertex select mode, hit A to deselect everything. And let's select this loop right here that goes, that kind of divides the top lip from the bottom lip. And we go into top view, you can kind of see that it's also outlining the tongue, which we don't want to deselect the tongue. So I'm going to hit C and hold down Alt and clear out these guys. This is kind of a trick to be able to see inside something that's closed. So we'll hit H now and it'll hide those vertices and uh, I can now select one of these faces and hit control L and then hide that and now we can see the bottom of the mouth and we can select our top teeth very plainly just click in here all the ones that are pointing down make sure you select something on them and not seeing through it Okay, now we hit Control L, and we missed this guy. Control L. Is that all of our top teeth? I believe so. Go ahead and hide. And now we have all of our bottom, the jaw, the bottom of our jaw, which was what we wanted to single out. So let's select all of these guys here, and what the heck, some of these guys back here. And let's go ahead and create a vertex group for those guys. So we're going to hit plus sign, and we're going to say jaw. Okay. So now, let's just hit Alt-H, and it'll unhide everything, but everything else is selected, so just hit A again to deselect everything. And uh, now we've got our vertex group already created, just hit Select. Uh-oh, I forgot to assign them. Let's Control-Z a couple times. 
There we go. Assign. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to assign these vertices to the group first. Okay. Now, Alt H, A to deselect everything. Now select. There we go. The only the jaw is selected. So now I put my cursor right about there, and I'm going to rotate around the cursor, as you can see here. Make sure I'm on my right shape key, and hit R, and you can see that I have uh, the proportional fall off. So I need to turn that to either turn it off or just turn it to connected. So I'm going to turn it to connected and hit R, drag my mouse and just kind of turn that way down. And kind of get an idea of what this guy is going to look like when he's snarling. But you can let's do it to about right there and let's go ahead and select these guys. Do it a little bit more. And what the heck, these guys, and a little bit more. Okay, so now I got our dragon snarling up. Oh, we tabbed out edit mode, and he snapped his mouth closed. Well, that's okay. We just go to our shape key controllers here, and change the value all the way up to 100, so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> kind of see some grossness going on here on around his tongue. We need to go in and fix that. So let's just select this loop here around the back of his tongue. So actually, I'm just going to face select mode, and I can just uh, hold on Alt Shift and click that loop there. W, and I'm going to smooth that back out so there's not so much ugliness going on. Okay, now I tab out, and it's cleaned up some. Okay, so now kind of get a preview of how he's going to look. Rawr. Okay, so now when we're messing with his uh, with his texture map we can see what we do when we do inside the mouth. We can see the color of the teeth and all those things. Let's go ahead and render that out just to give a quick idea. Rawr. Everything's black in there. Way too dark. Good thing we did this, so now we can see the problems with our teeth and everything. So, let's go ahead and... You know, one thing that we could do, I'll tell you what we could do. Now that his mouth is open, we could re-render those AO maps, and uh, and it would clean that up because it's not closed together so closely. So let's try that. Let's see what happens. Uh, rather than make you watch the render again, I'll just set it up, and then I'll, uh, I'll pause the recorder so you don't have to sit through it because, remember, it takes quite a while to render that. Uh, UV image editor, okay. Don't want the render result. Want a new image? Okay. So let's try that. Baking the ambient occlusion in. I want selective to active. And okay, everything else should be fine. I'll pause it and see you on the flip side. Real quick, I got the uh, no images, no images to bake to problem again. Let me create a new image here, just real quick. Let's see if that'll help. Um, what was it going to make it? Twenty four hundred by 2400 okay and what the heck let's go ahead and give it a UV test grid okay now let me go ahead and bake make sure everything's gonna go properly hmm apparently not no images found to bake too okay May oh well, my dragon wasn't selected now, was it? So that I guess that, that would be the problem. Okay, now let's see. Where's my... There we go. Okay, so now make sure dragon selected. Bake. Okay. I'll go ahead and pause the recorder so you don't got to sit there and watch it. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, looks like it finished up here. And you can already see, if you go in, you can already see the inside of the mouth looks a lot better. So... I'm thinking, thinking this is the tongue. That's a lot better too. Let's go ahead and compare it with that previous version. Here's the tongue. Hmm. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe that's not the tongue. Well, the mouth looks better, anyways. So, anyways, let's just go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and uh, save it as dragon ambient occlusion underscore zero one dot png. Save. 
Okay, so now go ahead and collapse those guys. And let's go to our materials tab and the textures. And on our AO map, let's go just go to images and just go in here and go underscore zero one, hit enter, and it should now load our new one. And uh looks a little bit brighter even. So now if we render out with our mouth open, go ahead and save. It should look a little bit brighter inside his mouth. A little bit. Um, still a lot of darkness around his teeth and everything, but that's fine. We can go ahead and fix that uh, in Photoshop. One thing I just noticed is there's some uh, weird colorations here in some areas, and honestly, I do not know what is causing that. Uh... I, I couldn't tell you. I honestly don't know. Um, the, everything should be fine. It rendered correctly a few seconds ago. I don't know why it's rendering badly now. Let's try it again. Maybe it'll look a little different. Hmm. Still there. I wonder what's causing that. A little bit of problems around his toes as well. Hmm. This is odd. Oh well. Let's uh, just keep going and see see if it doesn't get fixed. Uh, one thing I want to do, instead of having all these stacked on here, I'm just going to go ahead and split my window again. UV image editor. There we go. Escape out. X that. Okay. Go ahead and bake the texture also and that'll kind of combine everything together so let's go ahead and create a new image now 2400 by 24 should get all the numbers 2400 there we go okay let's go ahead and bake out those textures okay bake All right, notice that's going quite a bit faster than the ambient occlusion because it doesn't really have to calculate anything. It's kind of just layering them together. So now I'm going to go ahead and save as. And let's just go ahead and select one of those guys and just say dragon skin texture. All right, save as. Now we'll jump into Photoshop. Open that bad boy up. Right there. Okay. And let's see what all needs cleaning up. I guess the inside of the mouth could use some. Let's go in here. Grab our old pen tool. Kind of just click and drag in here. Outline everything. Didn't have to be perfect. Uh, because we're going to turn the fill all the way down to zero, and we're going to go inside here, layer style, just double clicked on the layer there, and I'm going to add an inner glow, and I want it to be more of a red color, like so, maybe a little grayer, about like that, that'll work. And I want it to come from the center, and I want it to kind of blend towards the edges rather than make the opacity all the way up to 100% too. And also, blend mode needs to be normal. There we go. Yeah, that's too bright. Make it a little darker. Yeah. And let's turn the opacity down just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Get the inside of our mouth done. Now, which one is the tongue? I wanted to say that one this area here which I guess it's got the waviness of the tongue but not for sure tell you what let's do let's just put a mask over it with our pen tool okay I need to adjust it right there okay and I want to turn off the scroll till I can see the mouth. I want to turn off the layer style that I applied 
and just turn the fill all the way back to up, up to 100. And let's uh, let's grab that color that we created for the inside of the mouth. Is that the same? Select the color right there, and then select that color. Is it the same? I think so. Okay, so now let's uh, let's save this. Go ahead and uh, Control Shift Alt S, and it's going to tell me it's bigger than web size design for blah blah blah. But I like to optimize my images, so I'll set that to about ninety percent. Save and dragon skin texture. We'll call this one. We'll just name. Go ahead and name it zero one. Okay, back to Blender. And let's go ahead and close this out. Oop, back to Blender. I said, oh, that was the Blender render window. Okay. Let's go ahead and just make that smaller. Not sure I want to get rid of it totally. Grab my model, go to the texture settings, and let's just go ahead and delete all red right there. Go ahead and bump this guy back up to that level. And I want the source to be different. I want it to be the dragon skin texture. 01 that we created. There we go. And the mapping should still be as UV, yes, and color, but I don't want it to multiply. I want it to go ahead and mix it this time. Okay, so now I go ahead and save. And this is what we had before. Let's go ahead and render again. And make sure our tongue is, and everything's going to be that more maroonish color than the red. And here we go, problems again. I do not know what is causing this. Looks like our mouth is the right color, but what's causing these problems? I don't know. Let's see if it could be the lighting, I guess. Let's just turn on the ambient occlusion. Add, good. Turn off the light layer. Go ahead and render without the lights. Huh, it must be something. No, still problems back here. Oh, that must have been the leg, not the tongue. I see, I see. Okay, well at least we solved that weird um, um, problem with the artifacts showing up. It must have been something in the lighting. But uh, anyways, let's see. Let's go back into Photoshop. And let's delete that guy. Uh, one thing, one quick way to kind of figure out where all the colors are going to need to be and everything without just guessing like I was just doing is to just use the built-in texture paint function in Blender here. Let's just go to, where are we at? Textured view here on our dragon. You can kind of see what he's look what he's going to look like with our texture on there. Okay. And now I want to go to texture paint. Now I can choose a color. Go in. Oops. Not too far. There we go. And just put a dash bloop. Right there. And then Go over here and look. What did it just paint on? I don't even see anything. Let's go to view. Uh, check image painting on over here. Where? There it is. If I can scroll over there. There, there's our tongue. It was a little bitty guy, and he. Okay, go back to Photoshop. Alright. So that's the tongue. Let's, uh,. Let's make a shape around him. Okay. And I don't want it to be the inner glow. So I'll go ahead and kill that guy. But I do want it to be that color. So now I'll make the fill all the way up. And I would kind of like some of that shading to show through. So let's uh, let's set this to be overlay. Ooh, that's too much. Uh, well, hell, just, just, uh, pardon my French, uh, just set the fill down to 70%. All right. Okay, now then, um, let's see, anything else we want to do? Yes, we want to color the claws and the teeth, so let's go back in here, 
and grab a wider shade the teeth make this window a little bigger oops undo that I accidentally painted over here undo there we go make that window a little bigger uh, probably another thing we can do to make this go a little faster go to our no it's already set or just turn off the uh, subsurf uh, for now and then we can navigate our scene a little better okay so back to texture paint color we want for the teeth dash okay so now we can kind of get an idea of where those teeth are located on our map I guess they're all right there well that begs the question where are the claws dash okay I guess these little guys are the teeth and the big guys are the claws yeah, that's not gonna be fun okay well at least we know and knowing is half the battle so back to Photoshop now these guys the big ones need to be that dark gray color that I would like so let's just go in here and I'll set the fill down to real low so we can see through it okay just kinda go in here and try to get fairly close along where the border should be between the claws and the teeth almost there Okay. And done. Uh, yep, need to fix that guy right there. For those of you, those of you unfamiliar with the pen tool in Photoshop, I've got my direct selection tool uh, selected and I selected a point that didn't have any Bezier handlebars on it and just held down control and alt at the same time and it turned it into the little carrot symbol there and I just click and drag and it creates new handlebars there okay so let's make that all the way up and that's going to be a dark gray like so okay zoom out and one thing that'll save us a little bit of time where we don't have to outline around all those guys just click and drag a square and let's grab this here let's get our pen tool and add a couple of points on here a is that direct selection tool I mentioned select those okay these are gonna be the teeth so let's make those kind of a, a dingy yellowish white about like that okay and we'll just drag that down below our claws layer. Okay, so now almost there, almost there, don't worry. Uh, I believe these triangular shapes here are going to be our horns. So, grab our pen tool, just outline around those. Like so. I wonder, and these might be some claws as well, but we'll, uh, we'll see what those are here in a few seconds. okay zoom out and let's get that same gray color over there so we'll just grab in here pin, uh, eyedropper tool okay now let's go ahead and save this and apply it it's gonna be this guy right here save replace back to blender and Texture settings and hit the little circular arrows here. It's going to reload. Okay, it looks like it already has. And just go ahead and cancel this out. I don't want that. Uh, turn off texture painting. And it's still showing where we painted, and I don't want that. Okay, anyways, let's see what it looks like when we render. 
F12. Okay, ooh, that's looking pretty nice. How about that, huh? Those teeth really set that mouth off, don't they? Those claws, I guess those were claws on the what I was talking about. So let's, uh, I kind of like to darken them as well. It's not quite as dark as I would like. So let's uh, escape out. Let's save, because we're doing pretty good here. Okay, back to Photoshop. And zoom in here. Oh, my computer's kind of lagging. I don't know why. I guess all these little doodads. See, there's one, two, three. Hmm. One, two. This guy might be. What's this over here? Is that teeth as well? I wonder. Go back and look at that render. Yep, yeah, I bet that is. Those looks like there's some front teeth right there on the top that aren't white. So let's get those white as well. I know this is tedious, tedious work, but you got to do it if you want it to look nice. So we are almost done with this, though, so don't you worry. One thing you can do to, ha to keep from having to change the color on multiple layers, multiple shapes that are all going to be the same color, is you can just go onto that shape. Zoom out, we can see which one it is. Probably this guy here. Right. And uh, we'll go to Pen Tool and just to hit the Add to Shape area. So now, when I make a new shape, it's just going to add it to that one layer. So I don't have to go change the colors on all the layers that have this. I will on the previous ones that we did, but not on these ones here. So. Okay, kind of came out of the lines right there. Okay, I think, oh, one more right there. Okay. Okay, now, let's change those to be a little bit darker. About like that. Get that one to be that same color. And this guy. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now I can control save, control shift alt save, skin texture save, replace. And now we will apply it to our dragon. Actually, we can just reload. I think. There we go. You can see it reloaded over here in that window as well. So now we hit render. Let's go ahead and change our angle of our camera just a little bit. Let's go into our layer that has our camera on it. Grab the camera. Just rotate it down. We can see more of the open mouth inside here. Okay. Turn that layer back off. And F12. All right, all our teeth are there, all our claws are there. One thing I just noticed, though, we don't have our tangent normal maps anymore. So let me see what's going on with that. Normals. Good. Hmm. Tell you what, sometimes uh, things get load it into our little previews and then they just they don't change like I mentioned earlier like they stay in the preview settings but they stay in the memory buffer but they don't pull from the actual file so what I'm gonna do is save and then I'm going to just load a new scene and when I open that file again it should have cleared out all those that weren't attached to anything so now the normal map should actually you know what it may be hmm. it's not going to render normals i guess for that anyways <laughs> it's getting late and i'm getting tired so let's see what we can do with that those lightings and 
and uh, maybe we can let's set that bias wait a little further up that's a little too low I think maybe that's giving us some problems go ahead and save this and uh, turn off the ambient or let's just turn ambient occlusion to about uh, let's say 0.35 and that layer with the lights is on so go ahead and save and let's see what we look like now when we render big money come on no artifacts looking good so far okay I think that's good we've got some weirdness going on here but I don't think that's an issue um okay I think our dragon is textured um I'm running out of time where I'd go in and do the eyeballs as well um, but I might have to have you look at my other eyeball tutorial for that and then just go ahead and start on rigging in the next one. I'll talk to uh, Mr. Burke about that and see what he says. I might go ahead and throw that into part 7, but otherwise uh, you'll just need to do some homework on your own and, and do that one. So anyways, that'll be all for part 6. And thanks for watching. Pardon my stumbling around here and there, but uh, I think overall we got something nice going on here so thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time sorry let me add one thing real real quick you'll have to forgive me I didn't notice until after I had saved the video that or hit stop and saved the video that the last render still did not have the ambient or the uh, the tangent normal map applied and showing up when we rendered so um, I went back in and played with it and it just turns out I just needed to just go in here and just delete it start over Sometimes that's the best technique to do. So just deleted it, added it as a new texture, and set everything up the way we did before. And now, when we render, it'll show up the way it's supposed to. I guess maybe I did something wrong in the in the timeline here, but uh, I guess it is still a development software, so maybe there's just a few bugs still left in it. So anyways, this is what our dragon should look like once we render. it. got our scales here and there our white teeth and black horns and you know darkness around some of the crevices and things like that so anyways this is the guy this is what it's supposed to look like so anyways this is it so thanks for watching again and I'll see you in part seven